technologies being sent haywire at Earth's poles, and something strange is going on. That's why NASA wants to find out what exactly is happening. Well, we know that recently they found that we're losing our atmosphere from the Earth's poles, and uh, the NASA team, a NASA team has gone to Svalbard in order to set up a station there. It's the uh, a town which is closest to the North Pole, and they will be sending up, well, they have sent up sounding rockets in various missions, and they're still going on. These sounding rockets are to pick up data as they fly overhead to find out what is happening. It's not just the electromagnetic fields that are disturbing GPS and satellites above the poles. It's also the fact that we're losing our atmosphere They've also found that the atmosphere is denser above the poles. That makes sense because we're losing our atmosphere. It's all dense up there because it's spouting out. Now, the scientists are saying that we're not in danger of losing our atmosphere anytime soon to become like Mars. But still, it's not a very nice idea knowing that you're losing your atmosphere into space. So it's going out. Where is it going exactly? This is on Science Alert by David Neeld. If you get too close to one of the Earth's poles, you will notice something strange is happening because the gadgets are using radio waves, satellite connections, GPS, all these things go haywire. NASA is on a mission to find out why. There will be three missions. NASA is backing a range of initiatives to investigate the North polar cusp. They're called cusps, the North Pole and the South Pole. So they're examining the North Polar Cusp, which is a funnel in space that's thought to be behind the weird space technical technology phenomena that's happening above the poles. The North Cusp, for example, matches the one in the South and allows solar winds from the Sun to reach and get down right into through the Earth's atmosphere onto the surface of the Earth. So that means that there's solar winds that are not being reflected back, protecting our Earth, but they do enter through our magnetosphere and uh, rest on the planet. Now the aim of these missions is to get a closer look at what's happening, to uh, investigate other strange phenomena, like the unexplained patch of dense atmosphere in the northern polar cusp. And from our previous article, the dense atmosphere is most probably because we're losing atmosphere through there. Quote, a little extra mass 200 miles, that's 322 kilometers up, might seem like no big deal. This is what physicist Mark Conde from the University of Alaska Fairbanks says. He's the principal investigator on the cusp region experiment to C-REX-2 mission. He says, but the pressure change associated with this increased mass density, if it occurred at ground level, would cause a continuous hurricane stronger than anything seen in meteorological records, he says. So this strange blob of density could cause problems for spacecraft and satellites, knocking them closer to space debris, for example. The extra mass also interferes with GPS and communications being back to Earth because of the additional atmospheric turbulence that's created. And another mission, the CUSP Irregularities 5, ICI-5, that's a mission that launches this week with the aim of measuring the atmospheric turbulence and hopefully then distinguishing from electrical waves that are so also able to disrupt communication systems. Turbulence is one of the really hard remaining questions in classical physics. This is what Joran Moen said. He's a space physicist, University of Oslo in Norway. He's heading up the ICI-5. He says, we don't really know what it is because we have no direct measurements yet. Now, one of their missions that was completed unfortunately didn't do uh, as well as planned. The preliminary data from NASA's Tuesday launch 
shows that the mission did not perform as planned. The scientists are reviewing what went wrong. And uh, they say that we might have to wait to find out about the progress of ICI-5 and what, if anything, that can tell us, or if another launch has to be made to gather the data that was not uh, brought in from the first launch. Now, the last mission in the current group is the CUSP Heating Investigation, CHI, and that goal is to measure the flow of plasmas and gases in the, ga in the cusp, how they heat up, how they accelerate, and how they interact with each other. And all this data measuring coll collection should help scientists better understand what they have to deal with, what's taking place up there, because that has never been tested. And also to predict how the cusp is going to behave in the future. So this is very important to know if we're having uh, problems with this uh, GPS technology, anything passing over the poles, anything having serious interference with low Earth orbit and Earth technology systems. So the CREX2, the ICI-5, CHI are all the uh, missions of the goals of these nine different missions to investigate the northern polar cusp and they will assume of course the same is taking place in the southern in the south pole and it's a number of which have already been run so hopefully the uh, upcoming missions will be more successful the uh, physicist miguel larson from clemens university south carolina who is in charge of chi says each mission has its own strengths in other words, it's got each mission has its own um, purpose of what why it's going up. So we'll see what they come back, come back with. Uh, what I'm really worried about, of course, so they can't do much about the electromagnetic aspects of what's going on up there. They just have to forego and not go past the poles. You just can't change the Earth's magnetosphere that's spouting out. Um, you can't change what's not there and the solar wind that's coming in and I don't know why we're losing the atmosphere that to me is really worrisome I'll leave links below for you for this on Science Alert If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.